the first season of Vikings Valhalla got universal praise from fans and critics alike, transporting viewers to 11th century England. And with Netflix renewing it for not one, but two more seasons, our hype levels are already off the charts. With that said, just how much of the series' depiction of the Vikings is accurate, and which parts are pure fiction? Well, let's dive right in and find out. First up, Vikings never referred to themselves as the Vikings. Vikings Valhalla mostly does a great job of depicting what life was like during the Viking Age, and while it does mostly try to stick to actual historical facts, it takes a lot of creative liberties as well, especially when it comes to the actual Viking aesthetic and timelines. In the show, characters can be seen referring to themselves as the Vikings during rousing speeches and battle cries. However, the reality is that the modern term Vikings didn't really exist back then, and was only popularized in the 19th century. So they did not refer to themselves as Vikings at all, and identified as Norsemen or their nationalities instead. In fact, the term Viking didn't even mean what it does these days. Back then, it wasn't an ethnicity or a group of people, but was actually an activity, which roughly translates to adventurer now. So when someone went Viking, it meant that they were leaving their land to explore and potentially settle somewhere new. Now, if you're wondering why they had to go off and explore, it was because there just wasn't enough land for them to inherit due to overcrowding. Seriously, there were way too many of them. And while this adventuring did sometimes take the form of raiding and conquering like in the show, it was usually far less nefarious and violent than that. Next, Vikings loved colorful things. Yeah, we know that if you have to make something look powerful, menacing, and dark, you just turn down the color setting in your edit, which is exactly what the team behind Vikings Valhalla has done. And even though it does make the show look stunning visually, it also kind of walks all over the historical accuracy of the Viking aesthetic. In reality, the Scandinavians of the Viking Age absolutely loved colorful things. They had brightly colored decorations, armors, and ships. There are a few instances, though, where you see some of these on display in the show, like colored stripes on their armors. However, it is still nowhere close to the actual thing. Also, we know that the Vikings took pride in their ships, and let's be honest here, you don't just build something you absolutely love to leave it looking all brown and dull. So, of course, they painted their ships as well. We don't blame the showrunners, though, as someone charging at you in bright yellow clothes probably doesn't look that threatening. Next, leather armor wasn't really viable for the Vikings. Vikings Valhalla generally does a good job of showing different Viking clothing and armor. There's nothing cooler than seeing a whole army wearing slick leather armor charging towards the enemy. However, this is mostly done for the visual aesthetic of the show, and does not actually represent real life at all. Back then, leather was very expensive, and making armor out of it, especially at the scale of an army, would have taken a large number of resources. In addition to that, the leather did not even provide much protection against the weapons they had at the time. So yes, even though seeing the characters in the show wear fitted leather armor did look super cool, it wasn't really a thing at the time. This raises the question though, what did the Vikings actually wear then? Well, since they didn't quite have an abundance of resources, most of them fought in their normal clothes and didn't have much in the way of protection at all. Some higher ranked warriors did wear gambesons though, while the elite had access to actual chainmail armor and helmets. Up next, Viking Christians didn't fight their pagan counterparts. Vikings Valhalla is all about the complex conflicts and the politics of that era, and although the show does a decent job of weaving different narratives regarding these conflicts and fights, not all of them are historically accurate. For instance, in the series, King Olaf of Norway teams up with Jarl Kerr to fight the pagans and convert them to Christianity, and obviously this leads to a whole new war against the predominant pagan city of Kattegat. In reality, though, the pagans and the Christians of the Viking era did not actually hate each other. In fact, they got along pretty well, as most pagans had already started to convert to Christianity by the Viking Age. So the war between the Viking Christians and pagans in the series is purely fictional, and most of the fights that did flare up between the groups were just for raiding, and not for any religious reasons. And the main characters of Vikings Valhalla is out of place. Now that we have established some of the core differences between the depiction of Vikings in the show and their actual history, let's pivot over to the timeline and plotting consistencies that the show sometimes
sometimes stumbles into. The two main characters of the show, Leif Erikson and Freydis Erik's daughter, are seen fighting the Englishmen in the Viking War. However, while these two characters did actually exist back in the day, they had no part in the war itself. Why? Well, that's because they'd long been dead before the war between the Englishmen and the Vikings had ever broken out. So, the show takes some liberty by pushing its two main characters a hundred years into their actual futures. Not only that, but the Netflix series also depicts Leif as being a valiant warrior, which is also not accurate. In reality, he followed in the footsteps of his father Eric the Red, and was an explorer rather than a warrior. And this is exactly why he is sometimes credited with discovering North America. Next, King Canet never ruled alongside his father. King Canet is one of the central characters in Vikings Valhalla. He inherits the throne of Denmark from his father King Svein, who is ready to hang up his boots and retire. In reality though, King Svein never abdicated his throne to anyone, and was the instigator of the war in England. This meant that Canet never got to become king during the lifetime of his father. Not only that, but he isn't even credited with conquering England according to the Viking sagas, as it was his father who did it. Canet did eventually become the king after his father died though. He technically had to fight for the crown of England, as King Ethelred had regained control of London after Svein's death. Speaking of King Ethelred, the history of his character has also been changed quite a bit. In the show, he dies after the St. Bryce's Day Massacre, leaving his son Edmund to fight off the Viking invaders. In actual history, King Ethelred continued to live for many years after the massacre, and even defended England from the Vikings until King Svein eventually conquered it. History is complicated though, and while the show does condense and shift the timeline around, it's also understandable and makes for an arguably better and more engaging storyline. And King Edmund was much stronger in reality. Being a show that's designed to captivate an audience, having black and white characters is an easy plot device that can justify the actions of the protagonists. So when Aethelred's son Edmund has to step up after his father's death and fight the Vikings in the show, he's shown as an incapable and arrogant ruler, who doesn't stand a chance at defending his kingdom against King Canet. In addition to that, he also ends up becoming a puppet co-ruler, only to be murdered unceremoniously by his own advisor, Earl Godwin. So it's pretty clear to everyone that he's not the smartest person in the room. The truth, though, couldn't be farther from that. In reality, Edmund was a force to be reckoned with, and posed a fierce resistance against the invading Viking forces. He played a big role in the war both as a prince and then later as a king, and for that very reason, he was also given the title of Ironside, which the fans of the series will recognize as the title of Ragnar's son Bjorn. Lastly, Valhalla is not a resting place for dead Vikings. In the show, Valhalla is depicted as the resting place for Vikings who die honorably in battle. However, while that part of the idea of Valhalla is correct, the show also goes on to describe it as the place where they would then rest and drink with their friends until Ragnarok. According to Viking legend though, Valhalla is not the eternal resting place for slain warriors. There's much more more to it than just sitting around and waiting for the end of the world. In actual legend, Valhalla is Odin's Hall, where worthy warriors slain during battle would actually train themselves and hone their skills in anticipation for the final battle of Ragnarok. Of course, there's a lot of drinking involved as well, but Valhalla isn't quite the heavenly afterlife spa for the Vikings that the show makes it out to be. That's a wrap for this video. Are you irked by any of the creative liberties that the show takes, or do you prefer entertainment value over historical accuracy. Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next time.